on today's show, we come ready to celebrate quite a number of things. Mm, now, first on that list might just be us, the ladies of Wake Up Nigeria. That's right, because it's the midweek edition, and we love to call it the Wonder Women edition of Wake Up Nigeria. Four beautiful ladies are here to serve you some premium feel-good family content for one hour and 45 minutes. That's right. Uh, that's already a whole lot to look forward to, really. Honestly. Even we are excited. <laughs> uh, but we have to thank you for making us your television destination every morning, as always. We promise to deliver some fantastic content to you. And, of course... Uh, we are going to be introducing our, our host today with all the pomp and pageantry we can yeah. with some earrings I'm planning to take with me today. Winfrey! Yeah. How you doing, Mama? <laughs> I'm doing ah, Is great. MM hiding under the table? She was there just now. <laughs> she's, she's somewhere around the corner, right? She doesn't want to be, she wants, you know how MM likes now? Grand style. Yeah, Grand Street. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How are you guys doing this morning? Good, <laughs> we're great, but I mean what I said, though. those earrings are following me Did home. The girl, avoid me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see her jewelry box, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, but really. You uh, know, they say if you can dance and be free, mm -hmm. though I missed the memo, yeah. and not be embarrassed, or rather embarrassed, <laughs> you can rule the world. Yes, sir. I, I wasn't on the line mm. for that when I was younger. Well. I can't dance to save my life. But, but you still rule, Mary. You rule. You a queen. You oh, are a queen, thank darling. you. Mwah. <laughs> now, finally, we kind of get why we remain a trendsetter in this business of TV shows. We have a number of really phenomenal women on Wake Up Nigeria, and we're not afraid to, you know, let our hair down. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm not one of those that let their hair down the way they should, but it's okay. <laughs> I own it. <laughs> My name is Mary Bashua Alimi. And I'm still live on you. So please stream the show live at tvcentertainment.tv or on Facebook at TVC Connect. That's right. Uh, you can also catch us on GoTV Channel 49. And of course, uh, that's GoTV Channel 27 mm -hmm. and UHF Channel 49. Yes, and of course, on Facebook at TVC Connect. Now you can also catch us, uh, you know, by Android. By Android, yeah. iOS, we have an app. All our past episodes are right there on YouTube at TVC Entertainment. That's right. Yeah. So let's tell us uh, what to expect today, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, first off, we've got Elizabeth Onyema, who is an advanced clinical weight loss expert and the CEO of Lee's Weight Watchers. Today, uh, we'll be talking about uh, something really interesting, mm -hmm. toxic facts, mm -hmm. the hidden killer. Mm. So a lot of people don't understand what toxic fat means. Stay close so you can find out more about that. Here also is a very good question. On relationships, is longevity actually a sign of a happy marriage? Ola Bisi Shoeton is going to be answering that one for us. She's a certified emotional intelligence and marriage coach and the founder of The Secret Place Wife as well the guy <laughs> you like oh problem. my god you like problem. that is a song i love rap music <laughs> and then when you listen to that song you like you like, you like my goodness uh, hey, <laughs> the guy as well as, that's what the album is called that's what wow. is um his new single is called. He said he's going to change his name. Mm. He's going to, he's, the album is coming out it on has been uh, changed. Friday already. The name changed. has been changed. Uh -huh. What 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 is the the new name? The guy. The guy. Yeah. Hmm. So who wants to be called the guy? Yeah. Ah. Wow. Mi wants to be called the guy. Okay. The Mr. guy. Incredible the guy. Nice. Okay. No, but there has to be a reason. The MI. There's always a reason. There are always a reason. We'll probably yeah, have to bring him on the show to find out more about yeah. that. But speaking of rebranding, oh my gosh, I love the hair, man. That's this why is a in the, in the, at the <laughs> beginning, so we can we can admire especially. This is a rebranding look, I man. What's you going know, on? You know when you guys say I like too much attention. Yeah, you know. Okay. I actually really do not like a lot of attention. Uh, wow. MM, you that used your mouth to say it last Wednesday. <laughs> when did I say was that? Last Wednesday or yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> when she said, me, I like to okay, be stared at. Okay, I like to be stared at. I like that. Yeah, you don't like to be given attention. attention is, is awesome. two different things. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so stare at wow. me, but... Oh. Don't flatter me. Don't worry. Stare at me, but don't give me attention. <laughs> That's another one. How are you another level. Is doing, Jerry? We're good. We're good. So much to talk about later on today. Interesting conversations coming your way. It'll be raining. Great content today. Oh, <laughs> nice. for the weather, y'all. 
Oh. Well, thank you for joining us on the news here on Wake Up Nigeria. I am Kelly. Egiga. Let's begin with some cherry news in Kaduna State, where five more victims of the Abuja Kaduna train attacked uh, by terrorists have been freed and now united with their families. This latest development was confirmed by Mamutuku, who has been uh, the lead negotiator. The victims have spent more than four months in captivity. Among those freed is Mustafa Umar an associate professor of medical biochemistry at the Usman Danfodio University in Sokoto State. It is still unclear if a ransom was paid for the release of the victims, uh, just like those earlier released after family members confirmed that they paid at least 100 million naira to secure the release of their loved ones. With the latest release uh, by the terrorists, the total number of uh, freed victims now stands at 29 out of the 63 passengers kidnapped, with 34 others still begging for their lives. When I kill up the bombers in Taraya, there was a new issue. Stema Kama Sore, home with the Sakaregi. Stema Kama Sore, home with the Sakaregi. Young Allah Dan and Baby, a Samu Chetura, you also. Someone snatched you one hiding. I literally was the, the medical doctor on camp. I was treating the captives as well as. Um, um, the bandits, or I would say Boko Haram, Boko Haram members. Um, there wasn't medication. To be very frank with you, I we, we had on on the radio somebody was claiming that um, they would bring medication whenever, whenever yeah, it was needed. There, there wasn't any medication on camp. I mean, we could we could go days. There was a day that a particular lady who had malaria. So um, malaria, you could treat malaria with a hundred with with, with one thousand naira. But this lady literally was going into coma because. There wasn't medication for her. I mean, there wasn't medication for her malaria. Well, these are very interesting times indeed. Hopefully, the other 34 passengers still in captivity will regain their freedom. And as the families of the released victims in Kaduna State are heaving a sigh of relief over the return of their loved ones, now, President Muhammadu Buhari, the nation's capital, uh, yesterday acknowledged that Nigeria needs more international collaboration to tackle terrorism. And banditry across the country. The president spoke when he received the letters of credence from Canadian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador James Kingstone uh, Christoph, and Ambassador of Mexico to Nigeria, Juan Alfred Miranda Oriz. Uh, president Buhari blamed the political instability in Libya for the rise of terrorism in the Sahel and also the threat to the sustenance of democracy in the West and Central African regions. The president told the new diplomats that the support of their countries and other friendly countries around the world has helped Nigeria make meaningful progress in tackling insecurity challenges, assuring that the threat will be defeated. Nigeria is not left out of, equation, of the equation as we are fighting to rid our country of mandatory kidnapping had a farmer crisis and insurgency. We are, however, making meaningful progress with the support of friendly countries like yours to sustain these fights until we overcome these challenges. And tracking stories outside Nigeria, China has condemned the visit by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan as extremely dangerous, warning that the trip was a threat to stability in the region. Washington does not recognize Taiwan as an independent state, but is bound by U.S. law to provide the island with the means to defend itself. The U.S. politician explained her reasons for visiting Taiwan in an editorial published in the Washington Post minutes after she arrived on the island. She said, quote, we cannot stand by as the Chinese Communist Party proceeds to threaten Taiwan and democracy itself, end quote. Mrs. Pelosi, the highest ranking U.S. official to travel to Taiwan in 25 years, arrived at the Songshan Airport in downtown Taipei on a flight from Malaysia. To begin a visit, RICS uh, pushing U.S. Chinese relations to a new low. The delegation was greeted by Taiwan's uh, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu and Sandra Outkeg, the top U.S. representative in Taiwan. Uh, Pelosi arrived in the Taiwan uh, in Taiwan rather late on Tuesday on a trip. Uh, she said demonstrated the United States' solidarity with a self-governed island, which China claims as part of its own territory.
Hello and welcome back. My name is Titi Owings. So we're going to take a quick look at what's happening on the covers of the newspapers this morning. It's Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. The Guardian, we're starting with this morning, says operational challenges hamper 5G deployment this month. Spectrum trading could be on the cards. MTN may spend $28 million on 127 new sites. Targets five cities before year end. Let's see what else we have here. Now, the high cost of 5G phones could hinder service delivery. It's also indicated here. And uh, at the bottom there, it says, uh, terrorists release five more Abuja Kaduna train victims, 35 still in captivity. Uh, photo story uh, there. It says, um, host communities warn federal governments against reissuing OMLII license uh, without consultation. And that's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. We also have with us the Punch newspaper, and it says terror attack. NRC suspends Lagos Kano Ajaokuta train services. Gunmen shoot at passengers' cars, buses at Ajaokuta. Six vigilantes feared killed. Travelers panic. Corporation stops Lagos Kano route to avoid attacks in Mina, Kaduna, and uh, Titan security. Beside the masthead there, it says bank borrowing from CBN rises 27% to 4.5 trillion naira. On impeachment, Shrinka backs lawmakers uh, against Buhari. Uh, kerosene hits 800 naira per litre. Nigerians face hard times. Manufacturers slash investment by 56% amid shutdowns. And that's what we have on the cover of The Punch. We also have with us the Nation newspaper. It says here... Lagos Kano top registration, uh, says Ekiti. Uh, Bayelsa, Yobe, Gombe have least voters. INEC begins cleanup of voter register. And that's all we have time for right now on the headlines in the dailies. We're heading straight for fitness. Stay with us. Okay, well, it's time for us to have a conversation. Yes, so. And uh, today's conversation... Even I dare say is wonky. It's, it's an awkward one, mm. mainly because it highlights what society really has become. Um, you know how people just bring their business on social media? Yeah. Some folks can be frustrated because of a certain situation and then they come on social media. However, I've realized that few people take responsibility. Mm. And responsibility also includes just keeping quiet when you know you're guilty not trying to prove a point. Mm -hmm. So this um, was informed by something that started trending um, over the weekend, where a woman talked about how a man beat her to the point of she losing the uh, pregnancy, twin pregnancy. And then she spoke about quite a number of things. And then the guy comes in a you know, rebuttal attack, like, I must say my own part. And then he claims that, hey, that they just met last December in a club, and it was just a one night stand. And one then, night stand. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then um, she's trying to force the pregnancy on him. Mm -hmm. okay, That's why he so, had to remove it. Yeah. So, so from that, from that first, in, in you know, first of all, um, the fact that it got on social media could be any number of reasons. Mm -hmm. First of all, the lady coming out first to say. Um, the man beat her, yeah. right? And then that she lost the pregnancy. That obviously, to me, her coming out is be, first of all because of grief, yeah. and then anger. Mm -hmm. That I I would make that excuse of her coming out to share that story, um, just as a part of her own healing process. Mm. I would say that. But then for a man to come back and now make claims that someone is a thief after losing a child. Mm. First of all, it shows you the maturity level of that guy. Mm. It's not very high at all. Mm. In fact, it's almost at the gutter. I'm telling you, you don't come out after a woman has said something that harsh. If you really have a claim, you go to, you get your lawyer. Mm. You have conversations with counselors. You, you go the, the, the legal route and say, oh, this person is trying to defame me. You don't go on social media and then now try to explain yourself. So it's just going to get messy. What even made uh, this um, a subject of conversation is, so I got receipts, mm -hmm. and it turns out that most, in fact, all of the guy's claims, unless there are other ones, were false. Mm -hmm. they, as at December, when he claimed they just met and in a club, they had been dating for months, mm -hmm. and her pregnancy was even already two months. Mm -hmm. 
of which he knew about it. He claimed that mom didn't know. She shared screenshots of her mom congratulating her shortly after she got the results, including sending screenshots of the pregnancy results and all. Mm. And so it goes on and on. Like, she has proof that all he said were lies, mm -hmm. including the, I didn't want the pregnancy and all, even where he was saying, oh, I would like us to go for the scan and all. She has proof. Mm -hmm. So what the focus is on today is, why is it that when people are guilty of things, they, they struggle to either accept blame or take responsibility. Instead, they always want to drag the other person, like ruin the other person's re reputation. Yeah. It's something that has become a fad these days, and I find it alarming because many people always believe that when somebody brings out a rebuttal attack, it means that person is the correct one. We've heard the other side of the story, even yeah. when it might be untrue. Oh, well, there's that also. And there's, there's pride, which actually plays a major deal, right? Now, with today's internet and the way things go, just the way, the way you say it, people glorify aggression. Yeah. People glorify, oh, okay, you, I chop, you collect, yes. that kind of lifestyle. So, I mean, that is literally it. And also, clout chasing is also a part of everything, Absolutely. right? Very few people actually come out and say, okay, you know what? I take responsibility for this and I'm sorry about this. And then again, um, Titi was talking about, okay, going to get a lawyer, <laughs> going to do for defamation. Hello. It depends on the level of person you're talking about. Yeah. Who, this, like, per this person is claiming to have jewelry of five million, have you? Well, it's not about the money. Yeah, look, it's, it's not, not about money, Miss Road. It's never oh. about the money to actually hear, like, the exposure of people, mm. to show the level of people to, can never be about the money. In a case like, but then again, I think the funny part of the story was the one you were reading earlier of how he was literally throwing an apology out there. He was begging her to exactly, come back. Exactly, begging her to come back. So I Meanwhile, he came on social media to say he kicked her out. Exactly. So I feel in that situation, I sense, I sense the pride thing there, so okay, you think you can say all of this? Oh, yeah, me, I'll say my own bag now. Let's see. Yes. Oh, that whole drive. So, in the end, it's like, oh, yeah, sorry now. Shame, I don't, yeah, you want me to beg you? Oh, yeah, sorry now. Come back home. Come back home. Mm. So, for me, it's like, <laughs> like, ju just like that. Seriously. I think at the end of the day, it's more, it's more a case of let's just take our business off social media. Exactly. It, it's, it's, it can be um, really, really <laughs> disgusting mm -hmm. the way people actually mm -hmm. just talk stuff that mm -hmm. does not, and then, you know, mm -hmm. so that are not I true. See. Yeah. I heard the story in bits and pieces. Mm. And I'm just going to say that um, you were saying, giving reasons what, you know, why she put it up on social media, mm. Cloud chasing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. She's looking for sympathy, if mm. you ask me. Because yeah. this comes from, I mean, listening to the story, listening to the girl's story, listening to the guy's story, from the girl's angle, and that's because I'm also a woman, it's coming from a place of lack of self-awareness. Mm. Because why would you put yourself in such a, in such a situation Okay, fine, you have gotten to the point where it's not so pleasant anymore. Take yourself out of that situation. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's sad to say that for most of we ladies set the tone for the course of our relationship or how it goes from the beginning. She could have seen all of this signs. Yeah, she's science. getting to this point and now she's crying foul. Why are you crying to us? What do you want us to do for you? You want, you want us to come and help you beg the man to behave? Mm -hmm. No, people just you, talk, you take yourself out of the situation mm. in, in the first place. This man has done so much damage to you. You should be thinking of how to repair yourself and claim your self-awareness and, be, and do better and be better and try to surround yourself with people that will also help you to be better, not leave you damaged and broken. And now you're coming on social media. You know, I actually out. agree with MM. MM. However, MM. because <laughs> of the solace MM. calls that I do, yes. I'm a bit more empathetic <laughs> no, because but, I've I, realized that yeah. It's easy when you're looking at it from outside to say, come on, get out. True, but to be honest, but, seeing the tone, how he literally um, said, oh, yeah, come back home, I have a slight feeling she will go back. She will go back. She will go it's back. It's very like, when I listen to it, I have a slight yeah, feeling she's going to yeah, come back. Yeah, same all right, we would love to know what you have to say. Please use uh, hashtags Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Let's hear your thoughts. Stay with us. Women. Welcome back. You're still watching Wake Up Nigeria, and we're here in the kitchen. You know, every blessed day, we mm -hmm. make sure we put something out there to get you drooling, right? So you're not only drooling over us, you're also drooling over the food. And of course, standing here with me is Chef Blossom. How have you been? Very you went well. AWOL for a while. Uh, Can you yes, explain yourself? You know, sometimes you just need to take a break. And wow. 
She's not for me for us. I'm saying this. Wow. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, so now I see uh, an array of ingredients right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so tell me, what are we making today? Okay, so we're making French toast, the simple French toast. Okay. Yes. I, and actually, bread is something I can't do without, sadly, mm -hmm. but truly. And this particular one, when you brought it down, I was like, friends. Ooh, do you have a preference? No, it, I don't. Any, any type of bread. Wow. As long as it is bread, just give it to me. <laughs> right? This particular actually smells really, really fresh good. and yes. really, really good. So now tell me what ingredients do we need for our French toast today? Okay, so um, we have our star ingredient, our bread. You could use the slice or unsliced bread for this um, recipe. So we have our grapes for garnish. Okay. So we have um, some evaporated milk. Okay. We have our vegetable oil and some eggs. Mm -hmm. We have our butterscotch flavor mm. and then some butter. Okay. Simple. Simple. Now, I love this particular one because, I mean, it's bread, right? Yes. And as you said, there are different types of yes. bread. Yes. And um, you can just decide, that, okay, fine. Me, I actually be a fan of one type. Mm -hmm. But then again, this recipe actually gives you a way, another way to eat bread yes. other than just like... It's in its plain. ordinary plain bread, right? Then you can, you can, for this recipe, you can use your brioche, like mm -hmm. the you can use your French bread, you okay. can use any kind of bread that any works kind of for bread. you. Yes, okay. Okay. that works for you mm -hmm. for this recipe. All right, that's brown bread inclusive. I like to use dry, mm -hmm. dry brown bread. Dry brown yes. bread. Okay, great. So now run us through the procedure. What exactly do we need to do for this? Okay, it's a very simple, mm -hmm. simple um, way mm -hmm. to make this uh, meal. So um, first you just have your bowl, you break in your eggs. Mm -hmm. So for this, I'll be using two eggs, or mm -hmm. I might be using more if I want to. The quantity of bread determines how mm -hmm. much egg you use. Mm -hmm. So I'll be using two eggs, I'll break them in to a bowl, mm -hmm. then I'll whisk it for a bit, then I'll add my evaporated milk in it, whisk it, add it like a drop or two of the butterscotch. You could either use butterscotch, any flavor works. You could yeah. use vanilla, you could mm -hmm. use any flavor. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have, um, yes, after mixing that, you just flip your, duck your bread in the mixture, in the mixture. flip it. Mm -hmm. You could use a pinch of salt if okay. you want. Mm -hmm. Some persons use sugar, but I just want to go plain. Okay. So you duck it in the mixture, you flip on both sides. Mm -hmm. Then on the pan, we'll have our um, vegetable oil, like two spoons or a spoon, okay. tablespoon, yes, mm -hmm. of um, vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. We'll allow it to get hot for a bit. Mm -hmm. Then we'll put in some butter. The butter. So it's butter, the not mix margarine. It's butter, not margarine. Okay. So the mixture of butter and vegetable oil, oil gives this flavor mm -hmm. that, you know, brings out <laughs> particular. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So you want to put that in mm -hmm. and allow it to get to turn to golden brown. Okay. Then before putting in your bread. bread. When you put your bread, you allow it. The bubbles on the side, mm. it has to, you know, get uh, a little bit aggressive. Okay. Like, you know, when it's bubbling and mm -hmm. just allow it to reduce the bubble. That's how you know when to flip to the other side. Okay. And trust me, you want to use your gloves for this so mm -hmm. you don't get your hand messy. Okay. And, yeah, and also for hygiene. All right. That's yes. great. Amazing. I mean, and simple. And Very right there, simple. We actually have our French mm -hmm. toast. So now I want to ask, so now the ducking of the bread in the egg, mm -hmm. is it to duck and just flip so we have it coated or is it to soak? Yes, some persons like to soak. I like to still have bread. Exactly, have bread. Yes. <laughs> so when you soak it, it's, you have to, you know, when you soak it, the bread gets so soft. Yes. The, you know that you have to leave it yeah, the longer, piece, longer for the, the cooking to yeah, enter inside. inside. Mm -hmm. And then it might not really come out nice. Mm. That's my take on this. Okay. So i rather have it just, just, on, the just on, the, on, the, on, the, on the body. Yeah. Okay, so in another, another question. So can we butter the bread? No. First, no. before, no. no. It's called French toast. Yes, nah. So we butter the bread first. We'll not put it inside the egg. That way, at least it doesn't go in, right? The egg doesn't sip into okay, the like bread. The butter starts yeah, like exactly. Yeah, exactly. Hey, you know now, <laughs> as an ammo. As an ammo for the bread. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I think with that, it's, I think the butter will be excessive. It will be a lot, be right? A lot Very because true. we have Very some true. butter already on the pan. Amazing. So that's about it. Okay, uh, great. I mean, simple, simple recipe. I'm sure before we'll be back here, trust Chef Blossom now. She will work her magic and then we'll yeah. be done. I know you can also like um, mm -hmm. um, season, not season, but like add like probably like cinnamon. 
I was. Like, were you reading my mind? Mm, no, you no. were really reading my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so some persons say there is no French toast without cinnamon. cinnamon yeah. Some persons are allergic to it. Uh, yes, they are allergic to cinnamon. So I like to just stay on, you know. On, uh, on the fence. Yes, okay. on the fence. No problem. So cinnamon is actually good. The powder. If you want. Okay, you want. so now, Chef Blossom, get to work. Right about now, we have a very interesting conversation for you on the couch. So keep watching. Welcome to the couch. And today's relationship topic is a really interesting one. Hmm. So here's a question for you. Is longevity a sign of a happy marriage? And air quotes on the word happy. On relationship today, we have Ola Bisi Shueton. Now she's gonna try her best to answer that for us. She's a certified emotional intelligence and marriage coach and the founder of Secret Place Wife. Okay, so yes, you might find it very, hmm, I've heard that before. Well, last month we had the Secret Place husband and now this month we have the Secret Place wife. Oh. An interesting <laughs> combination in your household, I have I know. to say. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I know that you've been on the show before. This was probably, what, uh, three years ago? I think so. Three, four years ago? Yes. And a lot has happened since then. Um, your community has grown. Uh, your online community has grown. And this was one of the conversations you've had online mm -hmm. uh, in recent times. So a lot of couples have, you know, they'd be celebrating 20 years, 30 years, and so on. And it does make some people feel intimidated. Mm. So do you believe... Uh, longevity equals happy marriage? Well, um, I think it goes without saying, especially because we all know that couple around us that have been married for 20 years. Some are parents married for 20, 30 years, and the testimony is that we don't want what they have, hmm. you know. Um, indeed, there are some people who have also been married for long, and okay. they seem happy, even cute, okay. you know. But the answer is not a blanket yes or no. You know, but obviously longevity is not an indication mm -hmm. that the marriage is successful or happy. Mm -hmm. But longevity can mean that there's been some form of consistency, mm -hmm. resilience, dedication towards each other, forgiveness, all of which are components of a happy marriage. Okay. Do you see? So, but the answer is that longevity itself, which is the length of time that a couple has been married, okay. is not necessarily the marker of the fact that they've, they're successful and that relationship is happy. So there are probably people watching now who've considered, you know, ending a marriage. They've considered saying, you know what, I don't want this anymore for whatever reason. It might not be something violent. It might not be something um, really bad. Yeah. It might just be... Irreconcilable differences. Something yes. just makes them want to end it. But because of that mindset of, oh, the Johnsons have been together for mm. 30 years, you know what, let's see if I can just bear it. For those who are just stomaching a lot of uh, tension like that, what advice do you have for them? So it's not necessarily because the Johnsons have been married for 30 years. Hmm. Typically, as a society, we're not really that accommodating of hmm. people who, in court, have failed marriages. Hmm. Now, the conversation itself is like, we're talking about successful, unsuccessful marriages. Hmm failed and happy ones. Mm -hmm. Now, that would suggest that if you are not um, in a marriage for a long period of time, you would have failed. Mm -hmm. And that itself is a problem. Okay. So that when people now come out of a relationship, either because they have been abused um, or just they cannot reconcile the differences, mm -hmm. they are shamed. Mm. Do you see? So there's that idea that, oh, I don't want to be shamed. I don't want people to feel like we failed at this. Okay. So we typically personalize our success, our failure, personal success and failure um, on the longevity of our marriage. And that's a much bigger problem than having the Johnsons as your neighbors mm. who have been married for 40 years. So I think that generally as a people, we need to be more accommodating of the fact that relationships don't work out. Sometimes people are not as mature as they should be. Anything but still be more, you know, just responsible and cooperative and just collaborative. So the way uh, longevity seemingly uh, equals happy marriage, it sort of seems like a short uh, marriage equals an unhappy one or an yeah. unsuccessful one. Yeah. But are you trying to say that there are short marriages that are happy? Well, happiness in itself is like a U-curved hmm. in a marriage. So it goes 
up, comes down, goes, goes, come up, you know, can come down. Yeah. So we cannot really say that it's basically about the length of time. I mean, one would even look at it logically. If you were happy, why did you let go? Okay. Why did you divorce? Okay. But the point is that even in marriage, if it's going to be a successful marriage, we must embrace the fact that happiness comes and goes. Mm. You know, sometimes you are happy. Sometimes it may be a season where you're parenting your children and things are a bit tough. Mm. You know, the, the understanding is seeming a bit impossible in that yeah. season until you figure it out. Sometimes it's a new job, you know, even some form of depression or personal life crisis. So happiness in itself in marriage is, goes in the you, you know, shape and up and down. So I feel like at the end of the day, whether it's a short marriage or a long marriage, it is a marriage and the people must know what they want from it. I'm going to um, touch on what we've heard many coaches say. Mm. Your happiness is not dependent on another person. Mm. I've heard so many coaches say it, you know, it's on every mug and <laughs> social media I posts know. now for motivational speakers. Now, um, it does feel like being happy in a marriage mm. does depend on how you are treated or how you are perceived or how mm. you are received by your partner. So I wanted to sort of maybe bust that myth mm. uh, in a sense because there are some people who are in marriages where the partner deliberately tries to make the other person feel unhappy. Mm. It does feel like there are people like that. Yeah, I think there, there are people like that. But when coaches or counselors say that your happiness is not dependent on the other person. It's to attempt to bring a self-awareness, okay. a consciousness to the fact that at the end of the day, happiness comes from within. Mm. That way, you're more tolerating. Mm. And another fact that supports that is, if you're going to in any way fix any re, um, relationship problems, you need connection first. So if you and I are fighting, and I've judged the matter, concluded that what you did is wrong and with bad intentions. Okay. It'll be very unlikely that I will move towards you in reconciliation okay. or that I will be receptive of you. Mm. Do you see? But if I understand that my happiness flows from within, I can pause and consider what my, what's my part in that situation. I can start figuring out, okay, what could I have done better? Mm. Even if it means working out, I could have done that differently. Once I'm able to bring myself to a calm state, okay. re realizing that my happiness is not dependent on whether you come to apologize or not, mm. then I'm in a better place to receive reconciliation mm. or to even a fight. This mm. is, that's why it's important. But it doesn't stand alone to say, oh, your partner shouldn't make you happy. Mm. Your partner is not just the source, of but they are a contributor to it. I love the way you wrap that up. I think I'm going to tweet that. Your partner is not the source of the happiness, but a contributor, a major contributor Absolutely. Uh, in, to your happiness. Uh, but um, we would love to know what you think uh, about this. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC with your comments and contributions. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. All right then. So have you asked yourself that question? Hmm. So many more will be answered. We're going to take a break. Stay with us. Talk nutrition and doing justice to that today is Elizabeth Oyema an advanced clinical weight loss expert and the CEO of Lee's Weight Watchers. She is a health and lifestyle entrepreneur who teaches nutrition activity and behavioral therapy. She joins us on the nutrition segment this morning to discuss toxic fat, the hidden killer. So at what point does fat become toxic? Okay, so fat becomes, when you say at what point does fat become toxic, it's a little tricky. Because there's healthy fats. Yes, no, well, when you say that essential body fat is healthy fat, so it means that you really can't be too skinny because fat obviously has its functions in the human body. It's because of fat that we are warm. It cushions our organs when we fall. For we women, they are particular, you should have an amount of fat for your fertility hormones to work, right? So we have the essential body fat. But when you think, when we're talking about toxic fat, it's a different ballgame entirely. And it can differ, like it's not, there isn't like a set amount it just depends on how your body shows this body fat. So what is toxic fat? Now we have two types of body fat. We have the subcutaneous fat and we have a visceral fat. Subcutaneous fat is a fat that hangs on a skeletal structure and it's a fat that you can grab with your hands. So think about your love handles, you know, that squishy part of your tummy. That is subcutaneous fat. The cheeky part, subcutaneous fat. Visceral fat, on the other hand, is what we actually mean by toxic fat. So visceral fat is the fat that stores itself around the internal organs of the human body. Now, um, 
So just make it very easy for everyone to understand. Visceral fat is pot belly. Mm? Mm. Good. So once you have a bulging tummy, it's a sign that you have toxic fat. Now, when you're talking about the extent, obviously you've seen people who have really big belly bulging. Yeah. Like that, that belly really bulges, right? And you see some people that just have like a little pouch, you know? So the bigger it is, the more toxic it is, basically. So that's it. There's a rule of thumb to it, though. For women in particular, if your belly or your belly circumference is more than 35 inches, then it is very, very clear that you have a huge buildup of visceral fat. For men, 40 inches and above. But then again, when you consider it from the other angle, that there are some people who have a really slim, um, like they are slim, what we call the pear shape. So we have, or better still, the apple shape. They seem to have like a bigger upper body and a smaller lower body, as long as they have that bulge. For such people, we would like to use the waist-hip ratio as a way to try and determine how bad their visceral amount of fat, the visceral amount of fat they have in their body is. Yeah. But on a good day, as a woman, once you can tell that your waist is more than 35 inches, you should do everything within your powers to ensure that it goes lower. In fact, every weight loss um, strategy must be geared towards reducing toxic fat. Mm -hmm. Because toxic fat or visceral fat is the fat that is directly linked to diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels, you know, irritable bowel syndrome for some people, acid reflux, you know, mm -hmm. sleep apnea, gout. They're like <laughs> so many diseases. So the, the way to fat. measure it is if your waist is 35. More, More than, than 35. 35 yes. So in a situation, your waist is less than 35. Yes. Are there ways you can actually control it before it actually gets out of hand? Oh, of course. When you, when you were born, you were not born with visceral fat. Nobody was born with visceral fat. I always tell people, look, when you see a bulge at the lower part of your tummy, I want you to know that if you didn't have a rib cage, that bulge will start from here. So that is just to make it really graphic and really scary for everybody hearing it out here, you know? So, for instance, now, um, when you say, like I said, you were not born with visceral fat, it grew over the years based on your food choices and your activity level. It is what you eat that grows fat. Mm. I'm going to say it again. Both this one -o and the visceral fat that grows around the organs... Mm. It is what enters your mouth that makes this thing grow. Mm. So once you're able to get these things out of your diet, get physically active, I can, I can tell you I am an example. I used to have like over 45 inches, but right now my waist inch is 32, 33. How did it happen? I don't wear cinchers. And it's so alarming that we now live in a world where you see, I remember when I was 18, 19, we could wear crop tops. In university, you're 22, you're flaunting your flat belly. But now we are having young girls at the age of 17, 16, wearing cinchers. It is scary because it is like, you, see this, you, you can see that the cloud is dark. You can tell that rain is about to fall. So I'm looking at these people and I can see that in a couple of years from now, there might this be person, problems. yes, is definitely not might. There will be. There will be. There's a difference between might and a certainty. It is certain. It is for sure. The only difference is the situation of grace. Mm. Mine may, may, may come up when I'm 21 and another person may be when she's 60. So nobody knows when it's going to, as these health issues are eventually going to manifest. Mm. Nevertheless, the sign that that belly is already bulging, is already a huge red flag mm. and must be attended to. Okay, so what are the measures that can be put in place to avoid it? I know most people will say so, exercise. No, that one is for sure. What because else? Because just like I said right now, what you eat grows belly, body fat, mm -hmm. whether visceral or subcutaneous. How you move your body is one of the ways the human body burns body fat. So exercise definitely is for sure. And to make it very clear to everybody out there, the good news that we have is when, it's, when you talk about subcutaneous and visceral fat, the one fat that grows fast, that you can easily burn off fast, is actually the belly fat. Mm. It goes faster than the visceral, than the subcutaneous mm. fat. Now, like I said, exercise is definitely one of them, but the food you eat also matters as well. And I'm going to categorize it under two major headings. The first one is avoid simple carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates will definitely grow abdominal fat. Examples of simple carbohydrates in our diet today are rice, right? Um, pap, 
of the regular Nigerian ogi, um, pasta, sugar, fizzy drinks, biscuits, you know? All these things are examples of foods that would definitely grow up. So someone watching now is probably thinking, yeah, Kuku Seme will not chop again. Okay, so yes, that's true. I'm not saying you shouldn't eat again. They're obviously very good foods you can eat. So mm. you think about beans. Mm -hmm. Beans isn't a simple carbohydrate. Think about yam, sweet potatoes, plantain, you know. Amala. So yam is healthier. Oh my goodness, yam is such... I don't know why people tend to have this idea that yam is bad. Especially diabetic clients. Please, you can eat yam. You just need to control your eating. carb. Yes, just control the amount of, you know amount of yam you eat at a given point in time, but it's super good food. All the vegetables are super good. All the fruits, as long as you do not juice them, mm. it's fantastic. So when you eat them raw? When you eat them raw, good. What about smoothie? No, no, no. You know, people have different ideas about smoothies. People will tell you that um, I blended watermelon, pineapple, apple in my head. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's too much. The idea behind a smoothie is for you to be able to incorporate vegetables alongside fruits. Okay. So your smoothie should not be super sweet. It should just be, be like bland. Mm. So you're bringing in, like if I tell you, if I cut pineapple and throw spinach on it, would you be able to eat it? Mm. You can't. Mm. But if I tell you, blend them together, you it can. It then gets easier. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. It, it's yeah. actually uh, been an experience for us. Thank Quite you. insightful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, at this point, uh, we'll join uh, Winfrey and uh, Chef Blossom in the kitchen. Thank you so much, Mary. Very, very insightful, interesting conversation. Blossom, is it know it's bread again? So what are we going to do now? With this, better go and check it. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll just, you just pardon us for today. Eh? We'll just, this is the last bread we'll eat. Please. After this bread, we'll With bread again. <laughs> oh yeah, now, so we have our eggs here. We actually waited, so we actually oh, take you guys yes. through the process of making this amazing French toast. Yep. So now we have two eggs broken in yes, the dish. So we just mix them. Mm -hmm. you want to egg is healthy, by the way, so yeah. Very healthy. Yeah. You know, I said yeah. earlier, you can go um, have as much amount of eggs as you want. As you want. Um, due to the quantity of bread, bread that you have, you yeah. have, yes. I feel this is going to soak up all that egg. Yeah, it would. Yeah, but then again, we're ha having milk, yes. so. So evaporated milk is what goes for this recipe. If, if you don't have, if you can afford it, you can use your powdered milk, just diluting water. No, okay, because I was yes. going to ask, is it only evaporated milk in you? Can you can use condensed milk. <laughs> you have sweet too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, you can actually use for any way. We don't have the issue again now. Milk is milk. You can use, milk. yes, full cream works Full cream? Too. Okay. Yes, full mm -hmm. cream works too. Skin, don't go. Oat any, milk, don't yes, go. Any, any type of, of milk, yes. that, whatever milk that your rocks your boat. Yes. yes. Okay, but so But trust now. me, the evaporated milk gives it this, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Blossom, oh, check your whistles. Yes, I will. <laughs> so now we have our... Um, butterscotch. butterscotch. Yes, like I said, you can use any flavor you want. So you can use your vanilla, you can use your, um, what are the flavors we have? Strawberry flavor. We have red velvet. We have chocolate. Red velvet to change the color. Yes. <laughs> yes, we now have red velvet <laughs> toast, to French toast. toast. <laughs> Whatever you use. Uh, we have banana. Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't know how she thinks I'm stronger than her, but okay. <laughs> I think it's the glove. Oh, okay. It's quite slippery. But still, no, baby. No. Okay, so we... We need help, oh. Yes, we do. Help. So we're cooking on medium heat. Let me use my... your pan to be very hot. You yeah. need to get your bread warm. The person I really cannot help, you. So we're going so on we medium need heat. Let me try to use it. Okay. Okay, so this works. So medium to low heat? Medium to high. Oh, medium to high. Okay. We just keep checking so we mm -hmm. know how to... I regulate that. Regulate this. Open. We allow our pan to heat for. Oh, wow. It's not opening. No. <laughs> Be careful when opening this. Okay. Yeah. So okay. here we have it. Mm -hmm. So you have a teaspoon because we don't have our teaspoon. You just put a half of a teaspoon. Yes, of it. Yeah. You don't want it to be. Mm, and then you know we have we have different types of flavors. They come in different brands. We okay. have um, the industrial flavor. Okay. If you're going to use industrial flavor for this recipe, please mm -hmm. just dip your hand in it and just drop it. It drops because it's, it's quite very catchy. concentrated. Yes. yes. Nice. You don't nice. want to go over, but it will just and capture the whole, the whole thing, thing, right? Yes. Amazing. Okay. So in case.
you're joining us. We're literally making French toast, toast. right? And now we have our eggs and milk and vanilla, oh no, um, butterscotch yes. and flavor in this bowl. And we're gonna put in our bread now. Bread. The pan is already heating up and then we literally will be frying it right after. Oh, I should have to dip, quick, quick, quick. quick. Okay, oh, let oh. me show you how to dip. Mm -hmm. Ah, but that, that was soaking the bread because our pan is not ready. But oh, yeah, we just, we just duck in like this. Yeah. Then you flip. Immediately. Immediately. After. I toss it on toss the it pan. Toss it to the pan. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, Blossom. By the time we're back, we'll have our French toast yeah. served. All right. Thank you. Hello and good morning. And once the hour strikes eight, that means we've been here for an hour. Straight into it. Bringing Nigerians the morning they deserve. That's right, yep. a morning of good food, mm. great music, and even greater conversations, if you ask me. Yes, <laughs> some have already happened, some are going to be happening in the next 45 minutes. We are doing everything we can to give you all the attention you need. Yes, so all we require of you is your own attention as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for that many minutes, we're talking 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been a great one with the chef so far, Chef yeah. Blossom and Winfrey having uh, literally a great time. Yeah, so if you're looking for <laughs> breakfast ideas, uh, especially now that your children are on holiday, don't worry, we have loads of ideas for you. Uh, one of the things you could do to engage them is to ensure that they watch the show every morning. And uh, maybe it could be also kind of like uh, something to do. Mm. Write, uh, write out the recipe for me. <laughs> Honestly, keeping the kids engaged this holiday is a big deal. Yes. And, uh, we, we can't wait. We can't wait yeah. for them to bring out some great things before they go back to school. Yes. And I know for sure that um, Winfrey and Chef Blossom are having so much fun in the kitchen. I don't know, they are conversing yes. more than they are cooking. <laughs> the food had better be ready at the end of the day. Perry, please, do not, do not, do not. Anyways, we're here, we're making our French toast, as you can see. She just put the oil um, just a little in the pan. The butter is about to go in. And of course, our we're trying the first one as a soak. So the first bread is still soaking in the egg and the milk mixture. So yeah, in a so bit. You, you know something that just juice. struck me, Titi? What? That amount of bread is now about 400 naira. <laughs> Neri, don't remind me. Like, remind me. that's like a quarter of bread now. I, I, I hear in some places a loaf is now one two. Ah. So that amount of bread is like 400 naira. That's about eight slices now oh, on the, the table. Bre our bread used to be for person food before. My dear. Nothing, you know, mm. a rich man food. Mm -hmm. uh, but hey, we... Yeah, well, well th things have happened. Uh, mm. But believe it, uh, even more things are set to come your way in this limited time that we have for you. All right, so let's tell everyone what we have coming up for the remaining uh, parts of the show. Don't worry, we're going to treat you nicely. Titila Oinson is my name. And my name is Mary Bashua Alimi. Thank you so much for following us on social media at TVC Connect. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for always watching old episodes on YouTube at TVC Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, for streaming the show live on Facebook at TVC Connect and also via YouTube uh, on uh, TVC Entertainment. Yeah. We're also on GoTV, Channel 27 and UHF channel 49. Yes. Make sure you download the app for Android or iOS to catch up some of our old episodes as well. And uh, well, hey, the first batch of August celebrants are going to be right here with us soon for breakfast, or rather for breakfast. Being celebrated. Well, they'll be celebrated. Being their birthday. On birthday shout outs. <laughs> And then, of course, uh, joining us for a chat is a contemporary Afro jazz salsa and hip hop dancer, as well as fashion uh, model Ben Dancer. He's the founder of Ben Dancer Academy International, and we cannot wait to have a conversation with him. Thank you for staying with us. You're still on to Wake Up Nigeria, and yes, it's time for our. Um, Chats. Yes, we're having a chat with our contemporary Afro jazz salsa, hip hop dancer, and fashion model Ben Dancer. He is the founder of Ben Dancer Academy International and was the zonal dance coordinator of the Dance Guild of Nigeria Bauchi State in the year 2019. You're welcome to the show, Ben Dancer. Thank you very much. I have seen your moves. <laughs> Dude, you can dance. Uh uh, only you hip hop. Afrobeat, salsa, <laughs> jazz. So you've been doing this for 16 years. Yeah. Be honest, has it been truly rewarding? Have you said, ah, I have found my purpose and it's fulfilling for me? Okay, uh, once again, I really want to thank you for this very great um, 
opportunity to be on this platform. You're welcome. Don't take it lightly. So basically, I would say, for me, dance has been something that's always been my passion. Okay. Growing up as a child, I saw dance beyond entertainment for me. I felt like it was an opportunity to reach out to other lives. Just like, like, like a doctor would operate, mm, mm. you know, on a patient. Mm, I feel mm. dance is something I need to do to reach out to your soul, to make you believe that there's a life beyond now, mm. right? Do you get? So I find it so satisfying. And then I'm always at peace when I dance. And whenever I dance, I see people being inspired, being motivated to become greater than they have ever wished to become. Okay. Yeah. So amongst all the genre, you know, of, you know, dance, dances that you do, I mean, from the, from the hip hop, jazz, yeah. Afro bits, which of them really um, motivates you? Which of them really wakes up that, that, you know, there's a certain feeling. Feeling. Yeah. Which of them, you know, inspires you the most? Which of them gets you in that, <laughs> you know, gets you at that peak? Come on. Alphabet, of course. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then, okay, so I mean, Afrobeats, I mean, that also um, has also brought to mind your working with Made Kuti. Sure. How's that journey been so far? It's been a very great and awesome journey. Okay. Now, this is this. It is actually good when you're working with someone who really knows, who shares in your vision, mm. shares in your idea, mm. and then you rub minds together. Mm. For me, uh, while dancing, before meeting my day, I've met a lot of um, art. I've worked with a lot of artists. And then you want to share with, with us some of them? Yeah, sure. I've worked with, uh, I've worked with MI. Okay. Yeah, I've worked with uh, uh, Ice Prince. Um, yeah. Mm. I've, I've shared some stages with um, NT4 Ghana, been on tours, you know, BOC, Classic, you know, a lot of artists. But the thing is, I find it so peaceful connecting with my day. Mm. with the vision he has because it's beyond ourselves. Mm -hmm. The changes we're trying to make, it's not about the fame. It's not about money. But how can this talent we have impact not just our immediate generation, mm -hmm. but to the forthcoming generation? Mm. And that's what Madikuti is all about. That's how the movement is all about. That's what Ben Danza is all about. Mm. You keep talking about impact, 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 impact. And I'm loving it because, I mean, it's your talent. It's what you have been gifted with and you want to share it with the world. Yeah. Do you think that you have made as much impact as you would love to? I, I would say I have done so far, but I have not really come into that particular person I want to see in other people. Mm. Reasons being that, I always say this word, for a great man to be celebrated mm. is for him to die empty. Mm. And dying empty is to replicate these things in the younger generation. Yeah. You see them rising. Hence your academy, right? Yeah. Right. So I, I would not be satisfied till I see a generation of people who can dance without drugs, without any addiction, mm. be it alcohol or any substance, mm. and they believe in their true self to rise beyond their limitations mm. Mm. and then become something great. Now, how's the academy been so far? I mean, you're bringing up these young gains to be, you know, great dancers and to be global phenomenons. And, yeah, I mean, sure. I, yeah, so how's that? How's the experience? Because it's not easy working with children. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so how's that experience been? You know, inspiring those young ones with your talent. I will really say it's not an easy one. But, you know, they say we catch them young. Mm. Because when a tree is still fresh, it's easy to bend. Yeah. But when it's dry, it becomes so steep. Mm. So I would say on my own part, uh, I have had this, um, because it's wanting to be a dancer, mm -hmm. and it's wanting to be a dance teacher, you know. A lot of people have the ability to, to, you know, to dance, but teaching, it's really a lot. It takes a lot of patience, you know, a lot of commitment, consistency. You're even giving more. Definitely. So it's building. Sometimes you get tired, and then when you look at a country like Nigeria, where dance is not yet absorbed. absorbed exactly. You know. Fully accepted, yeah. So, you know, but thank God for the likes of um, Kafi, for the likes of uh, Don Flex, and great, 
you know, dancers who are coming, who are bringing dance into the limelight and then making it, you know, the, the society accepting this mm, mm. because it goes down beyond dancing. Mm. Like I said, aside the fun part of it, dance comes with a lot of health benefit mm. that we yes, don't it even does. know. Sure. You know, and then it also preserves our culture mm. because it goes down to who we are as Africans. I agree. So for me, I am still trying my best and I will keep trying till the day I, you know. Okay. Have you ever had to deal with um, parents of any of the children <laughs> that you teach, you know, some of them out of resilience say, no, I want to do this. I want to be a dancer. <laughs> no mommy, no daddy. Have you ever had to deal with any of the parents saying, no, do not allow my child into your academy anymore? <laughs> okay, I think this takes me back to my own personal story. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, sure, because uh, I, I, at some point, my father almost disowned me. Yeah, because my father wanted me being a doctor or either a lawyer. Yeah. So, but I, I tell him, I said, we can all be great. You know, it doesn't really matter. And then it goes back to the year I opened my school in 2019. And then I called my father. I said, this is the academy. And then got so kind when I was the North East Zona Dance Coordinator, the, the, gov the governor sent in a, a representative, and then the commissioner came in, who is presently the national director, mm. that's for the national troop, Mr. Mohammed Ahmed Ahmed. Mm. And then when he came, he was so surprised. He oh. said, this dance of a team, is this how it is, is like? It, yeah. And so since after then, whenever you would meet my father, there's never a time you will speak with him and he will All not right. mention his son. In a nutshell, sure, what's the future for you? Wow, the future for me. The future for me is this. So long I see a better community, mm. like I said earlier, of dancers who would rise beyond their limitation, mm. beyond mm. the present circumstances we face mm. as Nigerians or as Africans, and then see a greater future of a world without addiction or without any immoral acts, mm. dancing purely from the spirit. Mm. And Thank I you so much. I mean, you, I, I was expecting something entirely different from this discussion. This has been very inspiring and impactful. You are a gift, and I pray that the world never gets enough of it. We'd like to see a bit of, you know, your performances shortly. Let's watch this. Okay. There does seem to be a lot of rap going on in the studio this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And talking yeah. about rap music, in the top <laughs> league is Olan Riwaju Ogumefong, a man you might know as what? Vector. Uh, no. Should we add the Viper? Uh, uh, he's more than Vector. Just, just Vector. He's Vector the Viper. The Viper. Yes, indeed. Let me stick to Vector. <laughs> he is a Nigerian rapper with four studio albums to his credit and numerous mixtapes. Mm -hmm. He also... Uh, I think he holds the title of something. Yes, the, the longest freestyle rap in Nigeria. Freestyle rap. Do you? Hmm. Ah, in Africa. Eh, eh, eh. We <coughs> We've, been We've been corrected. We stand Ooh. corrected. Mm. In Africa, he's yes. also an actor. He's a voiceover artist. And even more recently, became uh, a podcaster. Welcome mm -hmm. to the show. Great wow. to have you on I, the I show. I feel naked. <laughs> <laughs> good to be here. Uh, yeah, it's so good to have you here. Yes. So, um, uh, Vector, when it comes to rap music in Nigeria, I dare say you cannot mention the top three and your name will not be mentioned. Mm. Uh, so, I've always wondered how you've managed to stay on top of your game for so long because mm. rap is something that people just go, come back, and they just struggle to find their way back. But somehow you've been able to stay on top. How do you manage that? Um... If it's your game, it's your game, right? So rap, well, my rap is my game. And I try to tailor it to the reality of my life. So I would have something to say every time that is relevant mm. because it's tailored according to how I live my life. Yes, once in a while, I know we can give you some more fabu in there, but it's majorly, and it's the same thing I say to rappers a lot. And shout out to the lady performing now because she was in one of the competitions that I judged that. Oh. And I like that she never stopped and never settled. So, um, but yeah, we've, I've always said that most rappers need to be more original with the content of their lyrics. Now, not whether in accents or anything, no, just the content of your lyrics. So, if you feel like it's, you know, you're a Nigerian, whatever reference you have in the world, there is an equivalent in Nigeria. Indeed. And I guess that will sustain you for as long as possible. Mm. 
Okay, so let's let's stay on the issue of message and mm -hmm. the messaging inside our music in Nigeria mm -hmm. today. I've uh, seen quite a few of your posts where you have a uh, well. Uh, a few comments here and there on what exactly is happening in the music industry. Uh, and it does feel like rap, mm. at a certain point, started to dip in the industry mm. um, with almost no hope in sight for it to take over again yeah. as yeah. it was before. Yeah. And then now it does seem like it's been revived again. Mm -hmm. Well, capitalism is always a problem, um, whereby people are profit-driven. Um, and I dare say this, I feel like in the music industry, there are more businessmen than there are artists. Mm. Okay, um, that's true. And it's okay to be a businessman, but then as long as it's okay to reference you as a businessman when the time comes, mm. right? So most people are pushed towards where they think the money is. Okay. Hence where I coined the word called algorithm. Well, I didn't coin it. Well. <laughs> I just thought about an algorithm music. I, think, I call it algorithm music. Music where you're able to say, ah, if you don't like this, it will happen like this. Mm -hmm. And at this one, I did do a hit, so we'll do that type of music. So it's, it's now become a monotonous, long play. So the radio stations to me these days sounds like a long Alabama mixtape. Mm -hmm. Just the same, like one wow. DJ just playing the same beats, mm -hmm. but different, you know? Yeah. Speaking of beats, uh, was it last year you decided to dip the tempo a little with uh, Early, Early Mama? Mama. <laughs> yeah. And the response to that particular song. It took everybody's breath away. It's last man that is doing people now. Are you sure? Follow me, they go was slow <laughs> tempo. I feel like um, in Nigeria, they want you to be so much into what's the trend, um, but they then forget that you have a life. Mm. You have a story you're telling. And if all fingers are not equal, how come all our stories are equal? It doesn't make sense now, mm. does it? Mm. So everybody's putting dollars to their ears. Everybody is wearing bling bling, you know. Everybody looks like Migos. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's okay. pretty much monotonous like that. Okay, so um, I'm I'm just gonna take you back to your answer to mm. my question initially. Mm. Yeah. You know, there was a point you said fabu. Mm. Yeah. So what are these faboos? And then is the rap industry in need of those faboos to maintain relevance? Because many people feel every time there's always um, this um, in quotes beef between one rapper and the other, and it's not a Nigerian thing. It's actually a worldwide thing. A human. Is it? <laughs> but it's it's actually more pronounced in rap music. Is it something that is required to keep, you know, that industry going, or it's just something that just happens? Like I said, it's a human thing. People, I know people who seem to like to watch fights, <laughs> even on the road. Um, I guess it, it it tickles people's fancy to see altercations or feuds, but. For me, it's a normal thing in human life. You meet people that you disagree with. Um, but like I always say, it's okay to be lost as long as you find yourself later. I don't subscribe to that. However, I'm a very, I will confront whatever issues I face or whatever issues are in front of me. So if it's a rapper, that is the issue. Confrontation, yeah, <laughs> it's, but it's not necessary. You can, you can make music about our current states in Lagos if you live in Lagos. You can make music about your current states in Nigeria and still have lyrical references that are top-notch. So I don't know how, but Fabu is pretty much Lamba. Mm. So now you can say, that, oh, I have 100 women. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> um, you actually don't. I have yeah. several other cars. No, you don't. Um, I'm hood, I'm hard. No, you're not. Like, mm. yeah, just be you. It's OK. Whether, in, whether you can speak English or not, just be that. So that's what I meant by Fabu. But to encapsulate it, you don't necessarily need beef to make music in rap. Mm. Mm. So we, your lyrics, okay. when yeah. it comes to rap, yeah. what exactly is it that inspires you? Because I know different things inspire different people. Mm -hmm. uh, for some people, will tell you that um, I might be here and I might just get an inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, or is it that you prefer some kind of stuff to, yeah. you know, inspire you instead? So in my head right now, um, I can think right now and say, lyrically, I have powers. Mm. But if you're Superman... I put your S with a flower, like it's easy. Okay. For me, it's by, okay, so there's an S on the wall there and it has flowers on it, so rest in peace, Superman. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be, you don't need it if I talk about substance. There's no substance you take that adds something to you that you were not already originally before you took the substance. You just have to make sure you find the energy balance to be able to tap into that same spot every time you need it. Plus, if it's talent, you know, it shouldn't be a problem.
Absolutely. I'm, I'm thinking about the mindset you had to have had to start a podcast. Now, I know that in your community, there are a lot of really great intellectuals. Mm -hmm. um, now, you've met a lot of people, you've worked with a lot of people in the industry who have opinions. And you are a very opinionated person, especially online. I think it was a long time coming. <laughs> yeah. I think it was. Yeah. So talk to us about uh, the African Mind podcast. Um, so the African Mind is... I've seen a lot of people, you know, how they say um, we're in this era now where you have to check, oh, know your history, you know, so that you can avoid things that happen in the future and everything. I'm like, Why okay, do I so... feel that's a shit? Because <laughs> we know somebody that said it recently. Right? Oh, wow. I, I would, there are a lot of people that say that. There's somebody that said it recently. Oh. Do you want to tell me so we confirm whether it's a shit? Or... Okay, it is Bonner Boy. Huh? <laughs> oh, no, 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 definitely. I, 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 I like some of the messages that he throws out there at his interviews. Um, but so when they say know your history, it's not like knowing your history is a bad thing. I just feel like we're so focused on trying to judge our present day occurrences with the past that we don't analyze the present. Mm. Okay. Like, so what is our African mind today? I guess who we are is who we are now. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, we have who we've been, mm. we have who we become, but Working who we are as well. is who we are now. So who are we now? What is our major reality now? How does it affect us now? So you're an African, you have history, I'll be good. Now, what does that mean to you? Mm. How do we change that? So the podcast is pretty much allowing the African mind come to forefront, especially in Nigeria, where I feel like a lot of upbringing has stifled us in becoming mm. great. Mm. Mm. So what kind of guests do you usually have? Random people. Okay. Mm. Easy people. Like I'll talk to a presenter, I'll talk to a hawker, mm. I'll talk to, because I believe in the unism of spirit. Mm. So it's not necessarily about, like my podcast is not, academically rated, if I, if, if I need to say, mm. or for the lack of a better word. I'm not expecting you to be a professional, mm. just be a human being. Because okay. I feel like being humane is lacking in our society today. Mm. Okay. That's I true. think uh, this is an opportunity for us to take a quick look at what the podcast is uh, going to be like. Um, uh, but before then, but I think the we should take a look at um, one of his um, videos. Yeah. yeah but it'd be, it'd be really early nice. Early right? Yeah, okay. maybe. Yeah, let's <laughs> have breakfast. I need to point out something. Mm -hmm. Before you say this, who, who made this lady come to I you? I need to have anybody breakfast. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't even going to ask about that. I was going to ask about something. So, recently, a good friend of yours, in fact, your best friend, mm. uh, changed his name. Oh. Mm? Okay. <laughs> He went from MI to the guy. Uh, and <laughs> that was really great. <laughs> so he went from MI to the guy. So my, I have a two-part question. Number one, what's your relationship with him? Because in the song, the guy even, he said, me and Vector are cool. We haven't talked in a few months, but we are cool. Yeah. And so I just want to know from you, what's your relationship, both of you? It's, it's, you're cool. It's you're equal cool. to what he said. We're cool. Uh, <laughs> like, you're cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. Um, I wish him good luck with the transition from the old name to the new one. Okay. But I think it will really not work. I would, bruh, <laughs> so, we are going to okay. accept it, but we'll call him in my regard. So the second part was the vector part. Are you two going to change to it's gotta be Hector, hard Hector to... by father? No. If, if anything, I was, I was going to go back to Larry. Larry. Yes. Um, but, I mean, too many people know me as vector. I'm like, Larry. okay. Okay. It's hard. It's just like... <laughs> you know what? I'm trying to balance this out. Anyways, Mary, it's okay. Thank you. We have breakfast served in front of you now. We'd like for you to try this out and tell us exactly what you think about it. No mm -hmm. cap. F feel free exactly to drop a few shades. Not the tea now. Not the tea now. Uh, uh, the French toast. <laughs> it's French okay, toast. So yeah. I'm straight up. Yeah, straight out. There you say. Bread to ah, you don't want to use it for He's not interested. I'm joking. I'm waiting for him to dip it in it. Dip it in it? <laughs> well, Some people do now. Really? Yeah. It's nice, though. It's nice. You like it? Mm -hmm. You actually like it. All right. Okay. Chef Blossom has Thank done so it much. again. And of course, thanks to everyone who has been a part of the show today. Mm -hmm. The crew, our collaborators, all our guests, mm -hmm. Chef Blossom for mm -hmm. the delicious <laughs> breakfast, and especially to you for always watching. Thank all you right. so much. Yeah. Bye. Can't Bye. wait to tomorrow, see you tomorrow. Don't forget. Morning, 7, 7 a.m., everybody. Bye. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. Bye.